Hi everyone. Thanks so much for being here. I'm Nora Benavidez and I'm with PEN America. This election season, we are fighting disinformation and it is all hands on deck. So I'm really thrilled to have a friend of mine, author Astra Taylor here with us today to talk about the election, democracy, what it means. Thanks for having me and for the kind introduction. Before I get into my questions, I have to admit something to you. When the pandemic hit and I went home, we all went home, we were going to be working there. There were two things I brought back with me. One was, of course, as a lawyer, my First Amendment book. And the other, hold on, I have it, is your book, Democracy May Not Exist, But We'll Miss It When It's Gone. Yeah, wow, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Let's just talk about it. Does democracy exist now? In a, in a sense, we don't have democracy. We've never had democracy. If you think of democracy as something that's egalitarian, fully inclusive, uh, where people have access to basic civil rights and political rights, uh, and also I would include economic rights, then then no, I think democracy is you know, an aspirational condition. It's something we're working uh, towards, we're trying to perfect and enact. It's something that we have to fight for. The second part of the title, but we'll miss it when it's gone, is there to highlight the fact that even though we might want to be critical of our, our political system, we also have to cherish and protect the aspects of it that are democratic. Uh, we've always had to fight for democracy against people who would prefer to hold power, who would prefer to see uh, a minority rule over the majority. And so democracy is fragile. We're very close to the election season. What's keeping you up at night thinking about all of this? A lot keeps me up at night. I would say right now, some of the most troubling aspects of the American political system are really coming into focus. So we have a system that's not, you know, purely democratic in the sense that all votes in the American system are not weighted equally based on what state you live in. For example, your vote for president uh, can weigh a lot more or a lot less. If you live in a really populous state like California or New York, your vote for president uh, weighs less, is worth less than your vote if you live in a rural state, a less populous state. A candidate that loses the popular vote can still win the presidency uh, thanks to the Electoral College. A similar dynamic is playing out in the Senate, right? Um, smaller, less populous states also get more uh, representation in the Senate. And so I think there are these, these structural aspects of our democracy that actually prevent a more robust form of democracy. They actually block you know, the will of the people. Well, I want people who are watching this to feel like there's something they can do. And, you know, I want to feel I want the young audiences here to understand also what you're thinking about and what one thing you want us all to be able to do in the lead up to the election. Right now, there's actually a war on democracy itself. Right. There are concerted efforts from people who hold the highest political office to suppress voter turnout, to suppress engagement to make people feel like their votes and their voices don't matter, to make people feel alienated, powerless, lied to. And that is what we have to resist. And voting is part of that and saying, no, I will participate. I will be part of this political process. And then also building the coalitions and organizations and movements that we need to push even further and make our democracy more robust, more responsive for generations to come. As you describe the things that we need to do in coming together, who were you talking to? So in 2014, 2015, I was out making my documentary film, which is called What is Democracy? Which is still a very pertinent question. And I met a lot of people who basically said, I don't vote. A huge number of people sat out the last election and the one before it. And, and the number of people who are too cynical about our political process to participate is just growing. And you know, my response to, to those people when I met them was, you know, I understand the political system is broken. Our elected officials are un, uh, you know, not responsive to you. And to kind of respect that, <laughs> respect that disillusionment. And then to say, but the, the solution then isn't just to disengage and to accept it as our destiny, but actually to overcome it uh, to participate and to organize so that we can change things. Astra, thank you so much for being here. And for everyone who's tuning in, if you want to get involved with our fight, check us out at Penn.org.